Munda nyanguame Para pondo pepe le gua Anaba chayne ni yo Me ponio coca Munda nyanguame Para pondo pepe le gua the epoch of the 90s saw a lot of migration from Cameroon. Majority of those who had left Cameroon for greener pasture or to further their education went to Europe. France and the United Kingdom, Cameroon's colonial masters, attracted most of Cameroonian immigrants of that era. In the UK, there are many Cameroonians living there. Some were born here and have never set feet back home. <laughs> 21 years. 21 years? Yeah, but that's only because I can't afford it because we're always, all the money that we have is so that my grandma can come back and forth. But I would love to go to Cameroon. I can't go to anywhere else until I've been to Cameroon. Some got here years ago and have never thought of going back home. Some reasons why they decided to stay here are that some of them have met a better life abroad. But in most cases, the situation is that it will be difficult for them to catch up and be able to integrate themselves if they get back home. Life for some over here is not so easy as it's been written on the walls. The system over here is a bit complicated, that it has been very difficult for most of them to save and try to properly invest home. For those of them who had moved over to the UK for studies and successfully finished with their intentions are either now doing well over here or have gone back home to exploit what they came to learn from the UK school. These fellow immigrants from Cameroon in the UK have rallied to form their own communities, a situation where they live near each other in order not to lose touch of the Cameroonian culture and most importantly to support one another in times of difficulties. Such locations are usually African in a higher level, but Cameroonians too choose a particular area which they settle together. The two very strong Cameroonian presence in the United Kingdom are London and Manchester. <laughs> A lot of Cameroonians abroad are in the sort jobs. Some do this to catch up with the cumbersome school demands and to make a way out to try to send something back home. Some have been on these unspecialized jobs for many years. A handful of Cameroonians abroad are doing very well, especially those in the business sector. They have mostly invested in the needs for Cameroonians abroad and sell to these people who have been long out of home. There are Cameroonian goods available at these settlements that Cameroonians tend to cluster around in the cities of London and Manchester. It is not difficult to find Cameroonian food items in local shops owned by Cameroonians in these areas. Here yeah, we, we sell yam, we sell ripe plantain, we sell onions, we sell smoked fish, fish filling, we sell beans, different variety of beans, we sell uh, uh, tin tomatoes, we do like derica, we do 
a lot of different uh, variety of tomato. We do uh, palm oil, uh, vegetable oil, a bit of everything. Um, peanut, padarashid, um, which is um, peanut butter. We make banga soup. Yeah, we do uh, different stuff. Exeter, which is um, um, corn beef. We do magiku. We do a little mm. bit of everything. Yeah. We do stock fish, which is makanju, and um, we do all the variety of Cameroonian juices. We have uh, top grenadine. Yeah. We've got uh, Cameroonian fanta, and um, we have Gino cocktail. Cocktail, yes. And uh, we've got Uisebe, which is one of our favorite juice in Cameroon. And uh, we have plenty uh, uh, food from Cameroon, like Ndole. We do things like Ndole. And uh, Bobolo, Miondo, Matumba. We do most of variety of uh, main food. In our fridge, we got fresh fish. We have tilapia, we've got chicken, um, uh, we've got smoked chicken. We've got smoked chicken and uh, I'm supposed to bring a half bar. You know bar? Yeah. We have, um, we have crocker, which is bar, we sometimes have a lot of bags here. We've got a uh, shikwang, do beans, uh, we do gari, rice, different type, beans, black eye beans, gari, everything. We will go get cassava flour, make uh, bamileke dishes, <laughs> and then we have all this uh, fufu flour. But I work directly with. Um, with people that supply directly from Africa. Sometimes I do bring few things from Africa. In this fridge here, we sell aero. Uh, this bag of aero is eight pounds for one and a half kilo. Okay. Yeah. And we do cassava cassava leaves. Quem. Eh? Quem. We do quem, which is cassava leaf. It's originally from Cameroon the best of Congolese food and some Cameroonian dishes and we have a lot of different variety of food of any other most of African countries like uh, Cameroon and most of um, uh, West, West African countries. In the freezers we have things like peppers, eru, yeah? Uh, we sell in Dole. We have meat, <laughs> goat meat, sheepskin. We have shaki. In the freezers down here, we have all different types of fish. These ones are mainly uh, seafood and miondo. We also sell crayfish and dried prawns. There's a variety of palm oil. M many Afro Caribbean foods we sell. Kalalu. Palm oil beans, corn, sardines, big sunflower oil, more dried fish. We sell farina, maize, uh, mashed potato, pounded yam, all different kinds of maize dishes. We sell fufu, gari, more beans and more different types of peas, also plantain chips. Not just Cameroonians though, we have all different kind of African people and we have Caribbean people coming here to get the kind of African food, which is quite surprising. But then we live in Hackney and the area is, has a lot of diversity cultural wise. Also, uh, a lot of Chinese people and European people come in here for the different kinds of fish because the fish is such a large variety. For example, you see the dino that we important du pays. Ça sort du Cameroun, ça c'est les dinos du Cameroun, ça c'est les top euh, pamplemousse du Cameroun, les grenadines du Cameroun et là c'est les top citron du Cameroun. 
là vous voyez les savons, tout ça, et ça sort du Cameroun. Vous voyez par exemple ici, nous avons l'eau de Javel à quoi Que nulle part en Angleterre vous ne trouverez. Nulle part, nous, avons, nous vendons aussi l'eau de Javel à quoi Et là c'est le tabac. Le tabac, c'est-à-dire ça c'est la viande de mouton. Ça c'est euh, la viande déjà, c'est déjà faite à manger. Là vous les chauffez seulement pour deux minutes et puis euh, vous pouvez manger. Voilà, là vous voyez, euh, nous ici on vend un peu de tout, même les nourritures congolaises. Par exemple, ça c'est euh, la, la nourriture congolaise, ça c'est du... du ça c'est du macayabo. Et les aéros appellent ça le macayabo. Ouais ouais, ça c'est la nourriture aéroise. Voilà. Et là vous voyez maintenant le frigo est plein de, de nourriture comme je vous disais. Ça c'est le bobolo. Le bobolo du Cameroun. On leur fait les prix, euh, c'est trois bobolo à deux livres. Vous voyez un peu. Et là le paquet de miondo, même chose. Nous avons les miondo qui sortent du pays. Comme vous voyez. Le paquet c'est deux livres. Voilà. Vous vendez un peu de tout là. Là, comme je vous disais tantôt, nous avons euh, ici, euh, là, ici on a, les aéros appellent ça le pondou, nous on appelle ça les feuilles de manioc. Et le cassava livre, ça c'est le cassava livre pour les anglophones, les feuilles de manioc pour les francophones et le pondou pour les aérois. Voilà, vous voyez, ça c'est le cassava livre. Nous les vendons aussi ici. En gros et en détail, si vous voulez même, 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 même un conteneur, vous pouvez en livrer, hein. nous avons assez, nous avons beaucoup. On, on le vend plus de 50 sacs par jour, c'est ça, vous voyez ici, ça c'est la diversion, on, ça c'est le détail. Mais si quelqu'un veut plus de 50 sacs, on peut le vendre. Ici, là, vous voyez euh, ce frigo, à l'intérieur de ce frigo, euh, nous avons du ndolet. Ça c'est le ndolet, du, là, le, en anglais on appelle un butali. Ça c'est un butali en anglais, le ndolet en français. Voilà, vous voyez un peu, le paquet est bien costaud, une livre 50, très bon. Voilà, vous voyez un peu de jus partout, vous voyez, ça. On est un peu équipé, il y a un peu de tout ici. Et nous les vendons, ça c'est juste le display dont on est en train de déposer. Si les gens en veulent, en gros, on peut les livrer, même les boissons du Cameroun. Nous vendons tout avec les billets, même les billets. Vous pouvez me suivre là, je peux vous montrer le frigo pour, pour euh, les boissons du pays. Vous voyez à l'intérieur de ce frigo, vous voyez les Guinness du Cameroun, les grandes Guinness du Cameroun. Là, c'est les castels du Cameroun. Vous voyez un peu, on a tous les billets, les boissons sont là. On les vend en gros et en détail. Voilà, là, c'est le détail. Si quelqu'un veut même plus de... de si quelqu'un les fête et qu'il il en veut plus, on peut les vendre, ça. Cameroonians move far and near to get the touch of Cameroonian food items and drink a Cameroonian drink from such a bar or store. Some also come to buy from these shops for the sake of solidarity to patronize a fellow citizen abroad. I would rather buy from Vera. We have very few Cameroonian shops here. So I would prefer to support my fellow Cameroonians because whatever she gets from here, we will carry and support our community at large, both here and in the UK. I mean, in, uh, uh, in Cameroon, we buy, we buy gari, yeah. um, we buy the palm nut soup. Last week I had to buy a um, uh, corn meal, which, uh, which is used for, we mix it with uh, corn, fresh corn to make cocky corn. Okay. And it, it gives, it makes it to, uh, become we get a better texture because the corn here is so soft. You can never use a corn here all on its own to produce a, a good uh, paste of cocky corn, we call it. So with the corn meal mixed in with the fresh corn, we can get a good, uh, a good texture. There are also a handful of Cameroonians who sell Cameroonian food items already prepared. Not just Cameroonians, but the African community as a whole flocks in and out at this London restaurant for an African taste daily. Apart from just the Cameroonian food moving into the UK, as the Cameroonian population grows here, our culture and music has also come into London. The black and white nightclub in the heart of London is purely Cameroon. 
although mostly attended by all Africans. <laughs> Oh, je suis dans ce business euh, du showbiz, comme on dit, du showbiz, de boîte de nuit, d'organisation, de spectacles, concerts et tout. Euh, au UK, ça fait 11 ans, mais je ne pense pas que je suis le premier, parce que j'ai trouvé d'autres dedans. Donc, je suis venu prendre le relais pour mieux faire, parce que je l'ai fait en France depuis 28 ans, je le fais en France, avec 99% des artistes africains. C'est presque 100% avec les artistes camerounais parce que je, je fais plus la promotion, la, la promotion de la culture camerounaise. Camerounians are also involved in other aspects of the entertainment and culture business, with movie making and general production being the main. At downtown Manchester, there is not much Cameroonian influence should we compare the case in London. Here too, Cameroonians have engaged more in the entertainment sector and business. We are, uh, we are an IT-based uh, business which actually does a bit of event management and we also run a modeling agency. So we, the modeling agency, um, we have models on our database who, are, who, who we offer for promotional and commercial um, services. And event management, we run, we, we do beauty pageants, catwalk events, fashion events. And on the IT services, what we offer is we offer small IT services like designs, websites, we can set up uh, hard, hardware or software and services as well. It is very common to get conflicts amongst Cameroonians and the Cameroonian communities of the United Kingdom. There is plenty of sabotage and backstabbing in some cases. Some Cameroonians don't even want to associate with the Cameroonian community for fear of being leaked out someday. Si au UK ça fait 11 ans, en France et en Allemagne j'ai eu moins de ces problèmes. Bon bien parce que je ne faisais pas 100% camerounais, mais ici je me suis mis à faire 100% camerounais du show du business. Et là, au début tous presque tous me supportaient. Parce que tous me supportaient et puis après, ça a commencé avec des crédits. Comme vous connaissez, euh, le système de boîte de nuit, avec des crédits, tu demandes de l'argent. D'autres font même esprit, ils ont de l'argent, ils ne veulent pas te payer. Et après que les demandes cet argent de payer les boissons qu'ils ont pris, commande 10, 15 bouteilles de champagne, mais ils ont du mal à payer, ils ne veulent pas payer. Et tu demandes de l'argent, ça commence d'autres trucs, problèmes, ils te font la mauvaise publicité dehors. Et après, ils quittent, ils s'en vont dans d'autres boîtes faire. Parce qu'ils ne peuvent plus, ils se sentent mal à l'aise maintenant de revenir chez toi parce qu'ils ont fait des crédits chez toi, ils ne veulent pas payer, tout ça. Et je ne suis pas le seul Camerounais qui font ça. Ils font ça, beaucoup de Camerounais. Nous, nous les Camerounais, on ne supporte pas. On ne supporte, on est anti-progressistes. C'est le mot qu'il faut utiliser. Nous sommes des anti-progressistes en, en Europe. Je ne sais pas pourquoi. Mais on ne supporte pas nos propres frères. On préfère aller supporter ailleurs. On est vraiment les anti-progressistes et la plupart des gens, c'est une histoire de jalousie. Pourquoi lui Pourquoi toi Pourquoi pas lui Et ils oublient que vous n'êtes pas... Les cinq doigts, les cinq doigts, les cinq, là, une main n'a pas la même... Les, les cinq doigts n'ont pas la même taille. Et c'est comme ça que ça, ça tue nos business camerounais en Europe. Actuellement à Londres, on ne parle plus de boîte de nuit camerounaise. Parce qu'à la fin, j'ai fini par me dire, ils disent qu'ils vont aller faire de l'argent à quelqu'un d'autre, ils me rendent riche. Donc moi, j'ai préféré transformer ma boîte. J'ai fait une boîte africaine maintenant, qui n'est plus camerounaise à 100% comme auparavant, que je fais avec euh, et des Ghanéens, et des Européens, et des fois des Nigériens, ça dépend qui veut venir louer ma boîte. 
Et les, les Camerounais n'ont plus un mouvement à Londres comme auparavant. Il y a de, de 2000, de 2000 jusqu'en 2006, mais tout le monde entier, tous les Camerounais du, du monde entier rêvaient venir à Londres. This matter for this all my DJ are bring in the UK. I'm bringing them from back home. I'm bringing them from back home. And everybody know how to bring somebody back home, give his stay in UK or in France, pay all this, make the passport, all this to bring him and come and stay in Europe. I start in work. And where they come, I do that three times. Where the first one come, and people started, we working together, Is all the respect is there. After three, four months, he started make big. He want to come like you, straight away. That's his week, Amonia. He don't want to give the respect anymore again. He want to come like you. And people start to advise them different way. Oh, don't stay here, you're making this man rich. And which people telling them that? It's still weak, Amonia. They don't know where, how I start. And the way I bring this boy, the way I suffer to bring them. After that, I go and take another, I go different place, I go and take another one. I say, okay, I, I have a lot of Cameroonian DJ back home. Why well, I'm going to take them here? But I do two, three times. Now I say, I'm going to stop because I'm losing my time and my money for nothing and my reputation. Some of us who run businesses out here, we often, like when I speak to my friends, I also say the same thing. It's really a problem that I think has got to do with uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the manner of, of, of which uh, Cameroonians live out in the diaspora, live out here. Um, we, don't, we don't have communities that actually like try to bring people together. And there is a lot of lack of education concerning how we can be stronger and grow together out here. You won't imagine my own business. I'm being patronized by, by Nigerians and other Africans. Most Cameroonians don't even know that I own a business in Manchester. But at the end of the day, I think also that I'm not getting my word clearly to them. And they also might, I'm not, not really interested in knowing about my business. So it's something that we, we the business people, we need to, to educate ourselves. And the Cameroonians also need to educate themselves on how to, 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 to work together to promote each other. Because I think also one thing is that um, um, I think Cameroonians out there don't understand that um, each penny you spend in a Cameroonian business guy's place is a penny that you're also generating for yourself because that's the only way that a community can grow up together. Some totally don't patronize the businesses of other Cameroonians for fear that they may make them more successful and richer. Some Cameroonians in the UK especially without residential papers, would have loved to come back home if they had the means. It is not shining like the pictures that seem to paste on Facebook or send back home in most cases. There are a handful who have become very successful, yes, but it's very, very hard for many to. Apart from those who had gone through the education intentions here. Many Cameroonians have also made it through business since they came over to the UK. Bonne nuit, son pète n'a pas